Hello and welcome to Security Scan. I am Vishal Dahia and this week we will talk about SIG 716 assault rifle. Now, almost 15 years after the demand was raised, Indian Army has finally got the first lot of new assault rifles. According to reports, Army has received 10,000 SIG 716 assault rifles, which are part of the first batch of 72,400 ordered from U.S. firm SIGSOR earlier this year under fast-track procurement. Now, the SIG 716 is a 7.62 caliber rifle with an effective range of 500 meter. These new rifles will replace the Indian-made INSAS rifles and considered to be compact, easy to maintain and equipped with modern technology, these new assault rifles are expected to give a major boost to Indian Army's anti-terror operations along the line of control. Now, for more on this, we're joined by a distinguished panel of guests in the studio. Let me first introduce the guest, beginning with the Retired Major General Ravi Arora, Chief Editor, Indian Military Review. We also have with us uh, Retired Colonel Tanvi Singh Chauhan, our Defence Analyst, and Mr. Ajay Banerjee, the Defence Correspondent from the Tribune. Let me begin with you, uh, General Arora. Let's first talk about the need, the time frame, and how we have come about to procure these new assault rifles. Very important. You've given out the basic background to the issue. There are certain issues which must be placed in perspective. Firstly, uh, we are a 13 lakh Indian Armed Forces, uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, and we have 9 lakh of paramilitary forces. That makes it 22 lakhs. And our primary rifle, the assault rifle, is the INSAS 5.56. Uh, there are almost 20,000 copies, uh, not 20,000, 20 lakh copies of INSAS rifle in circulation, in stock, in inventory, under production, being replaced. And the life of an INSAS rifle is about 20 years. These first came in in the middle 1990s mm -hmm. and now it is 2019. So they've already been in service for over 20 years. Uh, some batches produced later are almost new because it was in 2017 that the decision was taken uh, to do away with it, to retire the INSAS. It will take some time to retire a whole lot of them. And because the replacements, that is, one is the AK-203 rifle, which will be made in an ordnance factory at Korwa, mm -hmm. will take time. They will start arriving from next year, and since they have to produce 7 lakh copies, it will take a few years for all of them to be inducted and to replace the INSAS. So the government decided and gave approval last year in February for... 72,400, as you said, mm -hmm. rifles to be purchased on fast-track procedure. That means uh, the procedure lays down a time frame of six months, but practically it has taken almost two years uh, for the contract to be finalized and the rifles to start coming. The first lot has just arrived. And why this uh, 72,400? Because the government said, let's meet our immediate requirements. By now, when we have decided the INSAS is not good enough, the enemy is armed with a better rifle. The terrorists are armed with AK-47 and their variants, mm -hmm. uh, which in many ways is better than the INSAS 5.56. So these have been contracted to arm the frontline troops, as the army chief called it last year in one of his press conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, they will not be for arming the whole of the Indian army. Remember, uh, these personal weapons or assault rifles are mainly for the soldiers who are fighting in the front line because of f functions, the officers and some of the people who man crew served weapons or other equipment, they are armed with carbines or pistols. Okay. So this rifle which has come in is for those frontline troops. Mm -hmm. And the government also decided that remainder 85% of the remainder 85%, 60% will be met by industry and 25% by the ordnance factories. Since then there has been a change. The Indo-Russian uh, rifles factory 
has come up as a joint venture and they, the will, produce, yeah, they will produce the AK-203 in large numbers. Okay. Uh, so this, not only the assault rifle, the army also wants a carbine because the INSAS carbine had not been fully developed or accepted. And the army also wants to replace the INSAS 5.56 LMG, mm -hmm. uh, for which also action has started. But it will probably take some time. Okay. So right now we have the assault rifle, the carbine and the LMG being replaced by foreign weapons under the fast, fast track procedure. Rifle has been decided will be the AK-203 to be produced in India by the Ordnance Factory mm -hmm. and they are yet to decide on the carbine and the LMGs. Okay, let me bring in uh, Colonel Danvish and Chauhan. Colonel Chauhan, I remember almost an year ago we spoke at length about how there is a need to replace the INSAS rifles and uh, you're there on that program and you pointed out clearly what is it that is not right with INSAS rifle, specifically if you look at uh, you know today's uh, uh, scenario. So, how does SIG 716 fulfill those requirements which are not met by INSAS? And also, you know, as all of us know and as General Rada has also pointed out, AK-203 is, is going to be manufactured in India only. So, why in between going for SIG 716? Okay. So, going uh, ahead with what General said, uh, you know, just uh, breaking it down further. Uh, where will these rifles be used? Who are those frontline soldiers that we are talking of? And where does this AK-203 fit in? Why have two types of rifles? So these are some of the questions that uh, would arise uh, in any common man's uh, mind. Well, uh, when we are talking of frontline soldier in context to this weapon six or uh, that we are talking of, it is the infantrymen standing at guard on the line of control. On the line of control, when it comes to your personal weapons, INSAS is absolutely, you know, uh, outmatched uh, by the Pakistani's uh, uh, weapon. You know, there are a lot of uh, uh, bad actions that take place. There was one day before yesterday. And uh, when it comes to such kind of uh, actions at platoon level and, uh, you know, at, on one-on-one -on -one basis, mm -hmm. there are INSAS rifle actually uh, puts our soldier down uh, when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. So, these... Weapons will straight away go there. Uh, out of the lot that is coming straight from America, some 90% um, will come to the army frontline soldiers as we are talking of. And then some will go to the Garod uh, commandos of the Air Force and the Marcos of the Navy. Navy. So this is as far as this weapon is concerned as of now. Now uh, about AK-203. AK-203 will largely come with the troops who are fighting the insurgency, be it in the east or uh, in the valley and the paramilitaries that are fighting the Naxals in the uh, Naxal uh, area. Uh, why so? Uh, uh, you mentioned that we, was, we spoke at length about these weapons uh, an, almost a an year back and I had said that there is something called faith factor. Uh, our troops, uh, that includes us, me as well, we are very confident with AK kind of a weapon. It has minimum stoppages. I call them infantry proof. You can just throw them, pick them up, fire, throw them in the mud, take it out from the mud and just fire and do whatever you want to do. Any funny kind of a thing that you want to do, you do. Maintenance is absolutely minimal. Mm -hmm. So I say that these weapons are the best infantry proof weapons available in the world and they have earned a lot of faith as far as soldiers are concerned. So AK-203 since it is a derivative of AK-47 down the line uh, and an improved version, it will automatically go in as far as the confidence part is concerned. Uh, so there it fits in. But in the larger run, on, on, on the larger run, uh, this six wire will be the mainstay of uh, the Indian Army uh, weapon, personal weapon. And as General said, that will take some time for the existing uh, inventory to fade out. I think... Uh, as and when and as and how uh, it will, uh, these weapons will replace it. It happened similarly when it was SLR mm -hmm. uh, by INSAS and it will happen it the same way. Uh, one thing that I would uh, uh, wish that uh, we have carbines and uh, LNGs also, uh, you know, from the same family. I hope uh, we come to that uh, uh, conclusion. Uh, that will really 
is the uh, is various logistics and various other issues that are involved. Okay, yeah. okay. So that's that's also quite an interesting point out there. We'll come to the specifications also a bit later. But let me bring Ajay here. Ajay, your viewpoint on the overall uh, you know placement of uh, SIGSAR, that's SIG seven one six in the uh, entire uh, weaponry segment here, which is there with the Indian Army and the AK-203 out there as well, and the rifle which we are trying to replace, that's INSAS. See, Vishal, before answering you, I'll bring in something else. See, three things have happened for the infantry soldier specifically mm -hmm. in the past two, three years. This rifle is the newest thing. We have also had newer BP jackets, which are BP jackets means bulletproof jackets, which are lighter, much more effective. And we also have newer helmets for the troops, which are lighter and can take a 9mm uh, shot even from, say, point blank range. Mm -hmm. These are the kind of testing parameters of those bulletproof helmets and the BP jackets. And this is the third important aspect of the infantry soldier being looked after in the past three, four years. Now coming to the rifle, why did the Indian Army need this rifle? As the two uh, people have pointed out, the INSAS fires a smaller round. The Sig Sawyer and the AKs fire a bigger round. That means the kill factor increases, that increases manifold. INSAS, as the troops tell us, or the people tell us, or we to see in seminars or hear in seminars is, that is more of an injury causing weapon. Mm -hmm unless you are very close to the, uh, in close quarter combat. Now, in this case, the six wire will have a bigger round and fire for a longer distance and have greater accuracy. Now, this is not to criticize the INSAS. Please imagine the INSAS was planned 30 years ago when we were still a closed economy and probably coming out of the USSR shadow. At that given point of time, it looked as if it was the latest weapon. Today, in today's world, we have taken the step of having a new rifle. This also means that we are going to take the next step also very soon, that is the AK-203. AK-203, as we already discussed, the factory is up there, it is coming up, the, 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 the rifles are being made. Mm -hmm. Now, please keep in mind, we need around 11, 12 lakh rifles. The army has so far ordered for around 6.49 of the uh, AK-203. The rest will also come from one of the sources. Most likely, in my belief, will be AK-203 will be the standard issue weapon in case of replacing the INSAS over the next decade and a half. Mm -hmm. And the Sikh Sawyer or its kind of weapons will be the frontline weapons, say, at the line of control. Okay. And possibly the LMGs which we have ordered and the MMGs we are looking at will also be of the modern variety. So these three, th four things have happened, Vishal, I think, are important for your program. Okay. So, Ajay, you spoke about, you know, the specifications and the caliber as well in terms of, let me bring uh, Colonel Chauhan here before I go to General Arora. Colonel Chauhan, you know, uh, the SIG 716 is uh, said to be 7.62 caliber. INSAS is around 5.56 caliber. So, uh, what difference, uh, you know, from an end user's perspective? Uh, Ajay has pointed out that it fires a larger round and, you know, it will have a larger, a much improved kill ratio. And uh, the range is also said to be somewhere around 500 meters for 7.62mm6716. Uh, Ajay uh, very nicely brought out uh, the aspect of a smaller round and then it is uh, designed to injure and not kill uh, unless or until you are very close. So, basically, it is all about the stopping power. Now, stopping power is that if the enemy is charging at you and you fire at him, will, you, will your fire be effective enough to kill him and bring him down way beyond his bayonet reach? So, if you are firing with INSAS, probably answer is no and he may end up hitting you with his bayonet before he uh, succumbs to his injury or he falls injured. Mm -hmm. He will not be stopped. Okay. But if you fire a 7.62 round from, say, SLR or a 6 or I haven't fired and I don't know, I'm sure it is on the similar lines, or, or the AK-47, the stopping power is far much better and effective and you will be uh, finishing the enemy much beyond uh, before he comes and hits you. So, okay. this is the basic uh, difference. But stopping power does not uh, only end at uh, the caliber. It uh, It is... Uh, the the 7.62 mm it is not that it is also the power of the cartridge and so many other factors also add to stopping power well uh, nevertheless if you compare six wire to ak-47 six wire will be a thousand times more potent weapon in terms to what i just said okay uh, general Aro. let me add to that mm -hmm. you know right now some of the problems which soldiers experienced in a insas 5.56 Mm -hmm. have been eradicated. 
uh the the problems which were encountered were first it was you know uh, in sas you had to you had the facility of firing semi automatic that means you just press the trigger once when it is on semi automatic mode and three rounds burst would be fired mm -hmm. but at times despite that it would just fire on automatic all the rounds being fired uncontrollably mm -hmm. second was the barrel was getting heated up Okay. okay. Third was that in cold weather the plastic magazine would crack, and the fourth major defect was that sometimes the firer would get splash of oil into his eyes. So these were sorted out, but then came the requirement of using additional equipment, under barrel uh, grenade launcher, a picatinny rail with the night vision devices, other aiming devices. which were added but you know when a rifle is designed and manufactured in the factory and all these come fitted as original equipment mm -hmm. it's a different weapon rather than retrofitting and later redesigning the weapon mm -hmm. there is always a difference so today you have insas 5.56 which you can fire with a you can fire grenades with a ubg with it and you can have picatinny rail and you can use the devices but still it is as compared to others it is not effective this point about 5.56 ammunition definitely it's a smaller caliber although armies all over the world are now rethinking and going to somewhere between 5.56 to 7.62 mm -hmm. 6.8 mm is also emerging as a favorite caliber mm -hmm. but that remains to be seen the indian army with all its wisdom has decided to go for 7.62 pakistan also uses the g3 rifle which has 7.62 some other advanced armies also use 7.62 uh, although other calibers 5.8 is also available 6.8 okay. is available okay so now this sig sawyer it's a proven weapon it's not one of the 10 best assault rifles in the world but it is proven it is well designed the extensive trials carried out on this weapon have shown that there are no problems it's very effective it's accurate now ak47 or ak203 which is being manufactured is also very efficient very reliable with just eight moving parts mm -hmm. when a bullet is fired there are only eight parts which move a rifle may have more than 80 parts if you strip the whole thing in the factory mm -hmm. but when you are actually using it minimum number of parts are moving so it does not lead to any stoppages stoppages are mainly caused because of fouling or because of the gunpowder smoke mm -hmm. getting deposited here and there uh, so these newer weapons come with chrome lined barrels which eliminate the you know fouling uh, even the american ar15 and the m14 m16 had many problems over many years particularly in vietnam mm -hmm. but now we are getting sig 716 which is a proven weapon very effective five many of the manufacturers will claim that the effective range is 500 600 1000 but actually it may not be so if it hits it can kill but effective range is also a function of sighting mm -hmm. you should be able to aim properly and fire if the aiming itself is such that you are covering not only the target but more than the target the bullet can go anywhere okay so it's a reliable accurate uh, easily maintained perhaps economical because after all five companies had competed for this uh, tender mm -hmm. and uh, sig uh, soyer incorporated was the winner and it's gone through trials and so we are getting a good weapon but we cannot rely on an imported weapon all the time hence the uh, smaller quantities are being purchased and that is where the ak203 would come in picture a uh, kaljohan i'd like to bring you in here again on a very important point which was raised by ajay there in terms of uh, overall uh, you know what new things the infantry soldier has received in the recent past you know changes in his gear not only the weapon so what all has been done and what more needs to be done from an infantry soldier's perspective here yeah uh, apart from what uh, ajay has said and general has said additional things that are coming into the army which uh, do not i mean we don't uh, come to know is uh, the uh, night visions that are coming they are uh, coming in smaller size lightweight with uh, greater uh, uh, battery backup uh, 
uh, now uh, army is also talking about changing the uniform uh, the combat uniform that the, the talk is on so uh, 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 and the dress part that includes your boots your various other things there basically the whole intention is to make that infantry soldier more comfortable in a in a particular kind of an environment with equipment as light as possible with dur uh, durability um, uh, as uh, long as possible something mm -hmm. like that so it, it it is your grenades are likely to uh, go smaller in fact they have and uh, uh, your equipment otherwise as such is condensing in uh, weight and uh, things are improving definitely. okay so yeah. so to ensure that you know it's a smoother run for the infantry soldier ajay uh, for, you know if you look at uh, the way changes have been made and you started with that uh, and you know overall holistic perspective in terms of the new rifle which uh, our forces have now got 6716 that's perfectly fine but the timeline is again a very important issue here you know the demand was raised around 15 years ago it's taken more than a decade and a half uh, for the armed forces to get the first order and meanwhile the AK-203 is also are being done out there. So that apart and what is being done, are we on the right track? Vishal, I'll take one minute to explain the use of this rifle first. Mm -hmm. See, imagine this, there is a soldier along the line of control, it's pitch dark at night. There is what General referred the Picatinny Rail. What is the Picatinny Rail? The Picatinny Rail is a rail on top of the barrel. It can take in a night vision, it can be fitted onto it. So that soldier will have a night vision, vision through the rifle itself mm -hmm. to aim at a target. That Picatinny rail is the most important aspect of this gun. It can fit in a night sight, it can fit in a day sight, it can fit in a holographic sight. So you can remove the sight, fit it back again as per the requirement of that time. Okay. At night you can fit in the night vision one through the same rifle. You don't need a separate night vision thing. That is the most important aspect of the rifle. Whereas you come, uh, talk about the timeline we've taken. Vishal, I always maintain that we are a slow moving country. Uh, we can't help it much about it. That is where the processes of the acquisition are. People are afraid of taking decisions. But in the past few years, the decisions have been taken, especially these little, little things, you know, the big ticket items with the media talks about, the Brahmos, the submarines, the aircraft. This is often talked about. But the troop on the ground is the man who's facing the bullet every day. So he needed better bulletproof jackets. We had BP jackets for the past 20 years, mm -hmm. but a lighter bulletproof jacket which can take a better load because you know if a bulletproof jacket weighs 3 kgs or 4 kgs it's a weight but it weighs 2 kgs or say 1.9 kgs it helps the soldier similarly for the helmet now the helmet is such that it takes a 9mm bullet from point blank range mm -hmm. now this is the improvement in technology you would ask why this was not done 20 years ago 20 years ago this helmet was possibly rarely available with the US forces mm -hmm. now the cost of technology has come down so we are now progressing as an economy our economy is growing as our economy grows we are talking about these things, the comfort of the soldier, as Colonel Danvir Chohansa pointed out. We are talking of comfort of the soldier. Now the soldier is made comfortable through better boots, better shoes, better clothes, okay. be better rifles. And he is actually very, very confident of the rifle, new rifle. When you talk of the troops in uh, counterinsurgency areas, wherever they are in India, they always pick up the AK-47 as a weapon of choice. Mm -hmm. So we have to live with those times. We cannot say indigenization, indigenization. AK-103 is indigenized, it's being made in India. So let us live with that fact. Okay, have. so it's the comfort of the soldier and the faith also, which the soldier has, as Colonel Chauhan was pointing out. Concluding comments from you, uh, General Well, What comes to mind very clearly is, why don't we have our own weapon, indigenous Indian, whether it is pistol or carbine or LMG, assault rifle, sniper rifle, or uh, anti-tank uh, rockets. Uh, it all... I just want to summarize. Mm -hmm. Remember, we had the Lee Enfield 303 rifle right from Second World War up to 1965 war, and then we had the L1A1 British mm -hmm. rifle made in India under license. Fairly good weapon. And then uh, we decided that it's time to have our own. This 5.56 was developed by DRDO and Ordnance Factory Board. Okay. Uh, 1990s, it was introduced in service. And it has lasted up to 2017, you could say, when the decision has been taken. That's because the government did not trust giving license to the domestic industry to produce small arms, mm -hmm. thinking they will fall into hands of the left-wing extremists and Naxal buddies and other anti-national elements. Okay. So that confidence came only recently when licenses have been issued for arms, ammunition and explosives. 
but it requires a lot of experience. Even the Americans have taken over 20 to 30 years to come to the stage when an M16 um, uh, modification 4 mm -hmm. uh, rifle is standard issue and it is the best weapon in the world today. Okay. So hopefully now onwards this requirement has to be met. We will imbibe technologies from this AK203 project and all the other weapons which will be made, assembled as well as made in India. And uh, then we will be able to produce our own weapons. Okay, thank you so much, uh, General Arora, Colonel Chauhan, and uh, Ajay there. So that is uh, the summary of uh, about new assault rifle SIG 716, which the Indian Army's frontline soldiers uh, have started receiving, and its uh, effectiveness as well as uh, utility on the front line. We'll come back again next week with a different topic and different set of guests. Till then, keep watching Rajasabha Television.